This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a fuck, you want to take it back. Wait for the perfect Welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show episode Six hundred and Thursday Tuesdays we've been celebrating professional wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, ready to talk some professionalized wrestling with you. And we're gonna have a lot of fun tonight. We got a special guest, but also on the line, joining us remotely. First of all, he's the only Mayhemer um with a future and endeavor letter from the WWE. He is the Alpha Mad Mike. Yeah. I like it. I like being the alpha. Story. That's good. <laughs> as far as this podcast is is concerned, yeah. I don't know about Pittsburgh wrestling, but at least this pod- podcast, you I'm are talking about. I'm in, I'm in life. There you go. Also with us, he uh, he likes to play games. He's the Riz joining us from the other side, the far side of Pittsburgh. Riz plays games on Twitch. Hi, Sorg. Yes, he's afraid of tunnels and bridges, so he 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 still well, resides. And also rain, and also rain. Uh, spiders and spiders. Also. Very large monsters. Are there spiders um, out there? What's happening you in Ron, Pittsburgh? Are you Ron Weasley? Is this what happens when I don't leave my neighborhood for two days? Exactly, sort of. It's, it's raining out. How the, am I supposed the, to get there? Did the, the kaiju like also boat? show up? I don't, up? Have, a, I don't like, have a I don't have a log to whittle. You do you do have the squirrel hill tunnel monster that you have to contend with. Um, that's true. That is true. Isn't that a squirrel? And that's and that's <laughs> yes, closed, yes, it's just a giant it's just a giant squirrel that lives above the hill. Yeah. So okay. inside the school. I'm going to work the- on that. I want to work on that rumor. But also back with us in studio, he's braved it all, and he's beaten the giant spiders and tunnel monsters with his club. He is the Beast Man back on the show with us. He's, he's making a Beast Man face for you guys on audio. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, everybody? I'm glad to be back here. Mike, thanks for having me tonight. Let's have some fun. Yeah, let's have some fun. Uh, you... you- You've done some things on the internet I want to get to later in the show. <laughs> you you are everywhere on the internet these days, sir. I'm trying to get my name out there, and man. It's, it sounds like you're going to be on more than the internet very soon from, <laughs> from what I've been hearing. Uh, but we'll, we'll touch on that here later in the show. But thank you so much for joining us. I'm sorry Larry is not here for you to threaten with your club again. Oh, it's all right. That was by the way the best. Like, the, that is one of the two best photoshops we've had in the studio is you with the club. And the second is uh, uh, Lawless with his giant gavel. <laughs> <laughs> Pro wrestling, you need large objects, right? Yep. There you go. So thank you, uh, Beastman Husk on the Twitters. And, of course, we've been putting a lot of matches out with you from Black Diamond Wrestling. Um, a lot going on there. I, I, think we, I think we created some new fans for you, too, yes. at Rise Wrestling uh, that we, we drug along with us this last time. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, But anyways, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, and you can uh, check us out. We're ha- here every Tuesday at Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page at 9 p.m. Eastern. So uh, thanks so much for everybody who is joining us in the chat room. Uh, like Tina, like Alex Carr is out there on the West Coast. Alex Miller, also on the West Coast. Um, also Dave Potter of the Tiny Shutter Podcast and so many more popping in through the the night uh thanks thank you guys being part of the nation i met like it's i'm meeting people at wrestling shows that are popping in here and, and saying hi and that's been a really cool thing uh lately thank you so much for the growing uh, mayhem nation it's very weird when somebody calls you Riz and you have no idea who that person is <laughs> or at work you've been having that at work lately yeah <laughs> but it, it's it's is this what it's like to be a wrestler you know you get recognized <laughs> yeah a little bit a like little bit no you, you want to know what's crazy well, a couple about a month ago, we uh, Black Diamond did a show in my hometown mm-hmm. uh, called Riverfest. It's like a big two day festival. Yeah, always so, the coolest pictures because there's like you guys wrestling, and then it's just like a river and a hill. Yeah, <laughs> that was a uh, that was a fun time. Poor Sean Phoenix, he gets thrown in the river. He has to get like five stitches. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. <laughs> don't get thrown in the Ohio River, no. you guys. No, I told him like, "Are you sure you?" Want-? I told him, "You get thrown in there, you're not going to come out alive." <laughs> he came out alive, <laughs> or at least the same person. Yeah. <laughs> The, and the weird thing, the weird thing about it is like, I live in Wheeling, and like, 
with my regular job, people go to Black Diamond shows. They see me on a daily basis. Hey, Beast Man, what's up? Hey, Beast Man, what's going on? Mm -hmm. What the weirdest thing is, is like when you have neighbors that live on your street and they didn't know you wrestled until they went over there. And like every day I leave for work, they're like, all their kids like, hi, Beast Man, hi, Beast Man. (laughs) I don't know if it's, I don't know if I should feel honored. I, I, it's pretty cool, but it's also kind of scary at the same time. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? So, mm-hmm. it's just your world's kind of colliding like that, right? Yeah, it's it, it's rough. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome! But uh, but also, anybody you can uh, hit us up wrestlingmayhemshow dot com. Drop us a line at our email address. <laughs> Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com or four one two two zero six WMS zero at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. We have a lot of fun over there, and of course, the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page and group. And of course, at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com, you can find uh, links to uh, subscribe to us in our favorite podcast and video format. Uh, and please look us up wherever you like to listen to podcasts, watch video shows, and uh, subscribe, share, like it, comment on it. Uh, that helps us get out there. And if we're missing from your favorite platform. Please let us know. And, of course, you can join us here on the Facebook Live, as I mentioned. Thank you to our streaming partner, the405media.com, that carries us over there. And we're streaming every evening at 9 p.m. Pacific time, midnight Eastern, so you can fall asleep to the sweet sounds of Mayhem Show. And this year, mm. the f- sweet the sweet sounds of the Beast Man. Yeah. Uh, and thank you to our <laughs> Patreon supporters as well, patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. We've been doing a little bit more for you guys at the uh, five, $5 uh, Patreon level. Been do- using uh, the uh, uh, Patreon lens a little bit more, trying to give you a little bit of behind the scenes. We had a little bit going on with puppets over at uh the uh iwc show this past weekend uh from uh before the show intermission i can't remember exactly when we did that uh so i hope you guys are enjoying us give us some feedback on what you want to see out of that kind of stuff and of course um other things that we're trying to uh, bring up there as well uh thanks to our friends at the fan of the show one dollar level uh bo diggity Woo! as well as Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Cronin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment. Thank you to our Pocky, Pocky Club $5 level uh, sponsors over there at Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, uh, Bradley Ruthers, Doc Remedy, and Dave Podner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast. And at our Pizza Club $10 level, is Billy Johnson, um, and I know he's been dealing with some uh, uh, medical things lately, so best to him out there. I hope you guys sent him some wrestling last week uh, to help him out over there to get to get better, because nothing heals like wrestling, as long as you're not in the ring, I suppose. Sure. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and you guys can support the show, like I said, at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. So uh, we got, well, first of all, uh, kind of on a down note, um, there was another um, passing. It seems like we're getting a lot of these lately, unfortunately. We're talking about just talking about um, um, Grandmaster Sexy here before the, before the show um, in studio here. But uh, Jim the Anvil Nightheart passed over the past weekend. And I know, I mean, I'm, I'm somebody who grew up on the Heart Foundation. And uh, he, was, he was always the more interesting one of the Heart, Heart Foundation for me. You know, he was the he was the big. He was the most charismatic one. Oh, he absolutely was the most charismatic one. You could argue he still is. Um, I don't like Bret Hart. Yeah, yeah. Kind of figured. We kind of yeah. Yeah. Oh, but no, but no. Jim Jim Nyhart was awesome. Mm -hmm. So, um, the passing for that, and of course, I dressed. Although I was, it was a little weird out. We dressed this a little bit on the Raw wrap up last night. Like I thought, their transitions from talking about the Anvil to (gasps) SummerSlam. Were yeah. a little awkward last night. That was so you, bad. You got that there, too? There's no good way to make a transition. Though. No, like, no, no. But the <laughs> way they, the, the way Michael Cole made it, like the, the one thing I, the one part I saw when he transitioned from Jim to the, what was it, the tag team division back then? Yeah. So that the, the look on Michael Cole's face. When he when he thought he nailed it, mm-hmm. well, it was like that's amazing. It's a go home show though. Like, like it, this isn't something that you could unfortunately like. It's not something you can really time out to have it go to a commercial break or something like that. Like, <clears throat> you have to kind of keep selling the pay per view, yeah, with every single segment because it is SummerSlam. So unfortunately, there there are not a whole lot of ways to do it. And he did it. Yeah, like, like it. It just so happened that the Hart Foundation won the tag titles at SummerSlam, or as Bret Hart would say, in the SummerSlam. So or SummerFest. No, that's that's uh, Jeremy Piven. Yeah, 
That's Jeremy Poon. That's Ari Gold. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and other than like the tag team, you know, Nightheart was always a guy that was uh, I always liked seeing on the show. You know, whether it was uh, what was it was a high energy. No, or he new, was with new 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 foundation. new foundation with him and, and Owen Hart, um, of course, and even seeing him pop up on IW or WCW a little bit later, uh, too. So. Uh, his, George, that's the his, third week in a row we've mentioned high energy that is, that is mm-hmm. we, we we're really on a big high well i did watch a high energy match last week uh, what are we saying at least we haven't mentioned mold done yet that's true oh uh, now we have super oprah's calling me he can wait super minute, oprah's so. you're literally getting a call from super oprah right yeah. now he can wait he can wait <laughs> <laughs> you were you were gonna say uh do you remember his run as who yes yes somebody brought would... that up i think shirley doe shared that didn't yeah. he yeah yeah I'm not. I'm not familiar with who. Who didn't last long? No. He's on first. Who's on first? Was it? Was it all just like bad? Who's on first jokes every week? See, I don't remember much of it either. Like, I, I don't even. I didn't even remember him doing that. Like, yeah. Till, till he Goku. wasn't around a long time. Um, he was around for maybe like a couple months, and then I think Nightheart went over to WCW for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like when Bulldog was still there. And then they came back when, you know, the Heart Foundation was getting started up again with uh, Brad and Owen and all of them. Was this like 92, 93 WCW when he was over there? I'm I sure. think 92 was when he was who? Okay. Oh, Jesus. Like it was. Sorry, Justin. Was, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> I think it was before the new foundation, but after like Brad Hart started his singles run. Mm-hmm. Oh, my. Yeah. So it, it was just. It was a weird time. It was a weird time. Um, and the uh, producer Missy is uh, sending over because I guess the report just came out. Uh, it was uh, it, the death was due to a uh, grand mal seizure uh, due to his Ooh. Alzheimer's, and that was from Tina in there. So uh, thank you for passing oh, that wow. along. So because I, I we usually hear that, but you know, a couple of days later we get like what happened, um, and it usually, unfortunately, you know, we're kind of moved on from there. Um, but um, so that's unfortunate. It just it sounds like just a complication with what was going on with him. So um, and I heard we were talking before because I think he had been clean for a while. You know, obviously he had. Uh, I think in recent years he's had some. I think they actually dealt with it on Total Divas, to be honest. Uh, yeah, they did. His, his there, were couple, there were a couple episodes around it. Mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> uh, but anyways, so uh, you know. Uh, thoughts and prayers out there for the uh, Nightheart and Heart families. Of course, uh, Natty off off TV last night uh, to to deal with this as well. So, um, but uh, all the best there. Yeah, you know, definitely somebody that uh, we think about. Hey, watch some Jim Nightheart matches over uh, over the week here on uh, WWE uh, Network. There will probably be a collection up pretty soon of Jim Nightheart matches. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they usually are since they happen on Monday. So uh, it'll probably be any day now, or, or they might just put it in the cycle for next week, maybe. So they're usually pretty good about that kind of stuff. So now, I, it is, it's nice for them to do that now. Like I remember a couple of years ago, if someone would pass away, it'd be, they wouldn't even show a remembrance to them or anything. Like that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's nice to see WWE have tributes for guys like that. Like I was mm-hmm. shocked when they did one for Vader. Mm-hmm. I was, I was happy to see that because he deserved that. Mm-hmm. For everything, Every, everybody that's he was such a big part of that company for for a few years. Yeah, so I mean, not in the good years for them, but but you know, definitely he was a big part of it. Um, and he was a big part of <clears throat> Boy Meets World canon too. Yeah, yeah. Did, mm-hmm. did, did, did Girl Meets World do a tribute? No, but they fucking should have. Yeah, exactly. Is Girl uh, Meets World still a thing? What? It's still a thing, or is that canceled? I think no, that was canceled. Thing. Is it? Yeah, oh, I think it was shame. canceled. I'm still on season one on Netflix. So you know what? Um, I, I'm actually going to get to meet Corey and Topanga at New York Comic Con, <gasps> so I'm going to ask them about Vader. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Topanga is such a big wrestling fan. Let me ask you something, Mike. Who is the better Savage Brother, in your opinion? <laughs> Ooh. Who's the bigger Savage Brother? Yeah. Oh, that's tough. Okay, what one was the better show? Wonder Years or Boy Meets World? Yeah, but Ben Savage had more than just Wonder Years. Mm-hmm. I mean, Fred, Fred Savage. I mean, uh, he had Princess Bride and he had The Wizard. Yeah, yeah. So I'd, say, I'd say Fred. Fred. Yeah, and, and he had some cameos in Austin Powers too. Yeah, so. he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I, I said Fred. Cool. Fred had a bigger imprint on my life with those movies. You yeah. know, 
So and the show. So, but but just barely. Boy Meets World was a big part. So mm-hmm. I was very lucky that Boy Meets World lined up. He was in the I, same grade I was. Oh, I'd argue. I'd argue that that uh, Corey Matthews isn't even the most successful of the Matthews brothers. Ooh, or Friedel's oh. Batman Beyond. <laughs> he, there you go. He is. He's Batman <clears throat> Beyond. You know, he's Aqualad in several cartoons. So, uh, well, cool. moving on. Oh, we got some word from uh, the because Ty Cross loves to get into the show here. Uh, but <laughs> he shared uh, Beastman. He passed you in uh, Warwood today. When you were uh, at the pull off, I respect that you pulled off the road to get in your phone, get on your phone. It's for the kids. Lesson for the kids. Yes. I mean, you are you are a hero to your neighbors in Wheeling, so they can't see you on the phone illegally. Well, hopefully, none of my uh, coworkers, my boss, heard that. So. <laughs> 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 uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see there's some other things uh in the news this week first of all uh all in keeps getting bigger and bigger i i know cody talked about how they were going to kind of roll out all the all the matches and maybe not even tell, tell you all of them before the event but a pretty big one that i think is going to get a lot of us into this kenny omega is going to take on pentagon yep. Mm-hmm. yep i'm all in <laughs> and ah, that's where mad I'm mike all is all in all in I'm all in. I don't care how I got to fucking see it. I'm seeing that match. <laughs> I mean, just put 10 minutes of Pentagon just beating the shit out of Kenny Omega. Mm-hmm. Kenny Omega not even caring. Mm-hmm. And then coming back and having a seven, eight, maybe nine star match with yeah. see, Pentagon. Now, now the only thing I wish they did was Golden Lovers versus Penna and Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Like just 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 imagine that that could have been a possibility, and and you, you can't say that it was you know you gotta have something for all in again that they do next year, all in again, all in <laughs> again, yeah. I mean that has to be the sequel, right? That is what they should call it. Yes, Cody Rhodes, uh, Cody Rhodes, you can if, have that one. If if you were watching, uh, being the elite, uh, you would know that they discussed before the match was announced that. Why not have Kenny Omega team with uh, Coda? And it was pointed out that hey, Coda already has a match, a, the six man tag match with the Young Bucks. I, mm. I know, but 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 what? And then he goes, the, the way they announced it was the best way they announced it. Just have a skit, just mm. announcing that he's going to face Pentagon. <laughs> it's great stuff. <laughs> and and obviously, like, you could also call it still in. Uh, you, mm. Ah, there you go. There you go. Um, uh, uh, Beastman, have you been following this all end news and, and seeing the match announcements? Not really. Nope, not in not in the <laughs> circles. <laughs> you're not all. You're all out. It it's gonna be a great show. Mm-hmm. It's glad. I'm glad something different's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. I with my I just with my with my outside engagement and everything. I don't really follow as much wrestling as I should. So to be honest with you, but. I know it's going to be a sack card. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be insane. Uh, I, I'm sure. I, I have a feeling whether you get the pay per view or not, you'll be hearing and gifting and seeing and tweeting um, a lot of things coming from this show in the long run, right? So, yep. uh, I got one more thing uh, really related to the Bullet Club. I thought this was kind of fun and I wanted to share it. Um, there was there was an interesting interaction on Twitter, and I'll have the visual for you guys about this uh, bootleg Bullet Club shirt that apparently is so. <laughs> So live PD, I didn't know about live PD. This is live how, streaming what, cops, right? How don't you know about live PD? I don't have TV, man. I, I watch cat videos on Pluto TV when I'm editing wrestling shows, apparently. Um, so this is a thing that happened late Saturday night after IWC. Um, so so live PD, is it, it, it's live cops. It, it's cops. It's it, co- no, no, it's not even live cops. It's, co- it's cops. It's cops. Okay. It's, it's, it, they, 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 just, they just, you know, make sure to tell you that it's, live when they cut to it like hey look at what's happening now and they like film that okay months ago it's cops with an artistic twist to it okay yes. okay Art- it's artistic cops artisanal cops artis- hey, art- art- artist artist anal cops are you what? are you making friends outside wait wait wait, wait, wait. what oh, that is something different sork oh okay sork? all right artist anal cops i'm pretty sure that was that gathering of the juggalos that was a horrible porno 
at the <laughs> gathering of the Chuggalos. All can be things that actually exist, yeah, hypothetically. Anyways. That, that's actually a good name for a porno. A horrible porno at the gathering of the Chuggalos. <laughs> that's true. That, that's also true. Uh, uh, you, know, you know those guys? You know those guys that were doing the bare knuckle boxing with Juggalo John Cena I was tweeting about? Which I interviewed the lead singer from that group years ago um, for a podcast. Yeah, they did. They did. They released some porns. That, that okay. did, of course that, they that, did. That did happen. Also, Mike Busey was there with the strippers. So there's that too. Anyways, back to live PD and Carl Anderson. I'm trying to get to a story. <laughs> uh, so there's this bootleg shirt on there. So he's calling. I was like, yeah, that's definitely a, a bootlegs. No one, no one sold the uh, the uh, old clubs in white. And uh, somebody calling them out. Uh, but talking about how how he was he was like do your research, but uh, he he did something about uh, um, hey bud save yourself some embarrassment before you go go all in from this other tweeter that was calling him out for it, and uh, just the young bucks Nick Jackson responding did you say all in? <laughs> <laughs> so just 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 I I just appreciated that along with the all in thing that it's uh, even permeating discussion with uh, WWE folks that you know despite their contracts would I'm sure love to be part of all in. So despite all their rage, they're still all in without a cage. What? Mm. I don't know. That was a strike. Could try. Yeah, that was good, a little could, bit of a strike. Could try. It was, a, it was an it attempt. Could try. It was, it, was an, it, was, it was an attempt. Although I bet, yeah. I bet Billy Corgan will probably be at all in given the NWA connection, but um, the, the title belt, not the. Oh, yeah. Raptor. Otis is there. That's right. That's right. That's right. So. Um, I'd be very the interested. Promoter to books himself in a world title match. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? <laughs> um, <laughs> Jeff Jarrett, uh, have, have myself I, to go over, brother, brother. <laughs> side note: Just because I'm thinking of the NWA, go watch 10, 10 pounds of gold. It's really good stuff. Friend of the show, Dave Lagana. It's it, it's and it, if you don't follow his his, uh, you know, wrestlers should follow his account. People creating things should follow his, uh, the Dave Lagana account because he talks a lot about storytelling. And and we had a discussion on Indie Mayhem show with him uh, about a year ago, I think, about that and the tools and like, stuff we use for this podcast, stuff we're using with the you know you guys in the local mm-hmm. uh, indie wrestling scene and everything. It just you know having those opportunities. Um, it, it, it it's go watch Ten Pounds of Gold and realize. Other than artistic vision, like they're not using much technically than that's not available to all of us listening to this podcast right now, right? Or doing this podcast or, you know, maybe the thing you're listening to this, this podcast on. So I, I think that's really important and, and seeing that and seeing just, you know, understanding storytelling, I think is the biggest thing, especially around mm-hmm. uh, wrestling like 100%. this. There you go. Speaking of indie wrestling, you know where you can check out Beastman matches? This guy right here. <laughs> <laughs> hugging dinosaurs and beating people up and <laughs> actually your matches from we we just put i put up like like two or three of your matches i swear in the last like two weeks nice so between black diamond and rise wrestling rise with a y you just they de- uh de- debuted re-debuted i think over re-debuted. there re-debuted yeah. over there as part of a, a faction with uh shirley doe and christian noir yep. so which was a lot of fun to watch that um, but you can watch Beastman um, throw people around over there at IndieWrestling.us. We got a lot of fun stuff going on over there. We have a lot of stuff. Uh, Cage Fury t- 2018, in which I became the only Mayhemmer to be in a steel cage match. As in, I was filming. I was not participating uh, in the match. Um, you can go check. You almost got into the match, sir. I almost got into the match. There was there. Well, I thought Wardlow was going to kill me with a, with the chair, but thankfully there was a cage in the way. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I was a little close to the, uh, too close to a flaming cha- uh, table for my yeah, comfort as well, was... and flying flying uh, bowling balls and everything. It was an insane match, and also an honor to be there uh, to do that for. Uh, a friend of the show, one one of the guys that that was uh, one, one of the, the original ones, one of the original people on this show that you know back in the day when we were a fledgling podcast, um, and you know that wanted to be on the show, uh, the Gambino brothers and Marshall Gambino and you know guys like that. So uh, sixteen year career, his final match, a big cage match with another another guy that's an early guy that was on this show, Chess Flexor. Uh, so really cool to be a part of that. And, uh, when they asked us to put somebody in the cage, I went for it. Uh, but Good job, sword. <laughs> I figured anything that involves chess flexor in a cage match can't be more dangerous than what we encountered in, uh, in Thailand. 
uh, together. So um, so that's there, and 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 we got some great shots of that stuff um, in his retirement speech and everything. Uh, clips of that over on the Indie Wrestling Facebook and YouTube page. Um, two amazing uh, cage matches. There and not even the cage matches. There were there were there were other matches that in, involved fire, involved skewers, involved uh, tasers, uh, more fire. Uh, <laughs> Riz can account for that watching from the outside, right? Sounds like my kind of party. Yep. Yeah, yeah. There, there were those giant toothpick things. Did they call them just toothpicks? No, they're skewers. Like the, the skewers. Yeah, skewers. Yeah, they did the, the Masada gimmick. Yeah, Masada. He yes. actually yelled "Thank you, Masada" before he did it. So yeah, our, our friend of the show, Daniel Hooven, uh, took 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 to him to the head. It was pretty nasty and and altogether a good show. One of the one of the you know best put together uh, for even even the cancellations that they had because they had yeah uh, uh, Johnson Gresham and Jordan Grace. Um, unfortunately, some family issues family issues weren't uh, involved with the show, but you wouldn't even known it from Jeff Cobb a part of it, just tossing people around. You're 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 familiar with that technique, mm-hmm. Beastman. <laughs> So, I mean, just the, dream match just, right there. Yeah, you go. Mm-hmm. Oh, Beastman and Jeff Cobb. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Somebody booked that. She seriously. Uh, Risk. What you're saying something? I was gonna say just like the East Coast West Coast Jeff Cobb versus Gory match. Mm-hmm. That was pretty damn close to being an awesome match. I think it was an awesome damn match. I think. Perfect match. Damn class. Oh, perfect A match. Perfect okay. Match. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, and you and guess where you can pick that up? You can pick that up at IndieWrestling.us. It's available on video on demand. You can rent or buy that. Plus, we have several other shows that went up. Uh, the last two years of Cage Fury are up there. The last Proving Grounds from last year is up there. Um, that I believe it was the debut of a lot of guys like Jinx, like uh, uh, Calvin, Calvin Couture, uh, Billy Ruxpin, uh, all Jamie a part Jameson. of that. Jamie Jameson. A part, uh, I think he was a debut. Was he, was he last no, the I year think after he, that? He was a year, year before, before that, that I think. Um, and a lot, uh, another winner takes all was up there as well with a ladder match with John McChesney. Um, uh, varying prices, um, you know, starting at the, the most you'll pay if it's nine ninety nine for a show from five dollars and up uh, for purchases and rentals if you just want to check the show out for a little bit cheaper. And stay tuned, we got something special. Uh, we're actually secret. filming some stuff, super secret stuff tomorrow. Uh, that now you know part of the secret. Uh, that and, Good job, uh, sir. And, and there might be some more of that. And if you guys are on Patreon, we might be giving you a heads up here in the coming. Uh, weeks as well uh, but there's going to be a special uh, announcement or release here before the end of the month with indie wrestling.us some people are beta testing it right now uh, but if you want to find out about that and make sure you don't miss a release um, what's better than indie wrestling how about some free indie wrestling from indie wrestling.us if you go and sign up for our mailing list there at the top of the page at indie wrestling.us you'll get some free stuff some free digital downloads uh, so and you'll get um, all of the info as stuff comes out for sales new promotions, things like that. So please check it out, IndieWrestling.us. And look up the Beast Man. We got a few of his st- things up there. Yeah. I think I think we might have you teaming with uh, or the Super Oprah up there too, right? I would assume. Somewhere along the lines in all the promotions that we've uh, got up there. So... Awesome. If you haven't if you haven't seen Beast Man and Super, Super Opera in action, go go hit up the YouTube. There's a there's a few of those up there too. It's a, it's a, it's pretty it's pretty fun. So awesome. So there's some stuff going on this weekend, Mad Mike. You're the closest to it, and you will be the closest to it this weekend. Yeah, I'll be. I'll I'll, I'll be at some of it. You'll be at some of it. I love that I'll you. Be all, at the good parts of it. You'll be at the good parts of it. You're you're always skipping the SummerSlam, but uh, yeah, it is SummerSlam weekend. It's the mini WrestleMania of New York City. Yeah, I, pretty much. I think it's last year in New York City, though. Is it? I think so. Where are they going next year? Are they I moving thought, back to Cali. I, yeah, that's why I thought that I heard. Because I thought Survivor back. Series was was going to be the Cali Staple Center thing. Well, you figure with how many is going to be back up on the East Coast next year. That's they're... true. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. That's unfortunate. I, I wanted to get to one of these SummerSlam weekends, uh, but I mean, there's enough of them going around. I mean, they're they're making big big weekends out of Survivor Series and Royal Rumble, so it's one of those. If you can't make Mania, you have like three other chances through the year, mm-hmm. and hopefully, one's in your corner of the states. I guess right. So, but good. Yeah, I, I'm excited. Uh, so, take, my full Brooklyn takeover. Yeah, take takeover. So I am um, getting close to catching up with NXT. 
Um, I'm up to the title match. Oh, geez, I just saw the picture for Ronda Rousey and Bats on the site. Mm-hmm. What, yep. is, what do you mean she meets a bat at ringside during Raw? There was a bat in the arena? There was a bat in the arena. Oh, jeez. There was a bird at IWC. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, I got to roll back on this. This is this is a thing that happened. Oh, no. mm-hmm. So we're last night. Can you pull it up? Yeah, that'll be up there in a second. All right. Um, And the bat goes in the ringside. Right next to her. Does she actually like? Is it more? Did it just like? She ignores the bat. She ignores the bat. No, she acknowledges the bat. Okay, she does acknowledge the bat because she's like, "Damn it, there's a bat." (laughs) What the hell? (laughs) That's amazing. So did it just? Yeah. Well, welcome to the big leagues, Rhonda. Yep. Yep. Or you're just a wildlife. Not all gonna be packed houses. Nope. (laughs) Jeez. That's awesome. I'm glad the bird didn't mess with anybody at the show the other night. Um, Jeez. Uh, But anyways, takeover's happening this weekend. Hopefully no wildlife there uh, for the most part. Uh, Yeah. I just realized this is going to be my third takeover this year. Really? Yeah. I went to Philly, and obviously I went to New Orleans, and now I'm going to Brooklyn. Jeez. He goes to all the good ones. Um, the big thing, of course, Johnny Gargano. By the way, happy birthday, friend of the show, Johnny Gargano. I hope that you got your Power Rangers birthday party. Um, oh, see what Candace got him? Candace I got him. saw the pile of awesomeness that... A lot of Marvel shit. A lot of Marvel shit. There was a Green Ranger helmet in there, too. I want yes. to point out. I assume he is going to wear that to the ring on Saturday. Yes. Yes. Um, but, uh... Let's see. They probably. Oh, hey, I probably, I probably look out because it's probably a preview episode on NXT this week, isn't it? So, uh, no, no, they're do actually doing stuff on it on there. Oh yeah, they're doing uh, bait. Uh, Tyler Bate and Strong are facing off. Uh, before oh, yeah. takeover. So. Wait, Fork, I'm a fan of Roderick Strong. <gasps> no, because he's a dickhead heel now. Yeah. <laughs> work. Honestly, in PWG, he was a big dickhead heel, and he was amazing at it. Okay. But, Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mad Mike has been like anti Roderick Strong would, for most of yeah, his NXT. I wouldn't NXT. think he would like Roderick Strong. No, I they didn't for the longest time, but now he's a heel and he's being a dick. And I'm like, oh, okay, this works because he's actually he's he actually has personality as a heel. Hmm. It's not as a face. So, what are you looking for uh, for takeover there, Mike? Let's do the preview this way. Oh God. Um. <laughs> I, I'm just so excited. For, there's not a bad match on the card. Jeez, holy crap, there isn't. <laughs> not a bad match on the card. Um, all right, so let, let's start at the tag title match because that's just fun. Um, <laughs> we got Mustache Mountain and the Undisputed Era. Mm-hmm. Like, right away, that's going to be amazing. The, that match where they won the belts back was just absolutely amazing. Yep. Um. You know where where uh, uh, Tyler Bate ended up throwing in the towel. Uh, the Trent Seven is his uh, is his uh, 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 trainer and everything. So like there was a, just a really good story behind that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm really excited for that. I don't know who's going to win. I honestly don't really care. Mm-hmm. I love both teams. Uh, I think whoever wins is going to get fed right to friends of the show Ray Rowe. Mm-hmm. And it's a Ray Rowe is fucking lucky he's not in this match. Because if he won, I'd be cashing in my title shot. That's right. That's right. Mike has a long-standing uh, OA of, of a title shot, which I think I think went back to the IWC heavyweight title at one point. Like, there was some challenge laid out, so we've been yes. holding on to that. So IWC heavyweight title. And I believe, uh, Sorg, you held me back. I held you back. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But uh, no, that's going to be a fun one. Uh, Ricochet and uh, Ricochet and Adam Cole is going to be incredible for the North American Championship. It still feels weird to say North American Championship. I'm okay with it. Uh, that match is going to be balls out ridiculous. Mm-hmm. That match is going to be insane. I mean, anything with Ricochet, yeah, is just going to. And yes, be producer Miss. Yes, producer Missy. I did Rick. I did say Rick. O'Shea. 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 Yes. Um, EC3 and The Dream. I watched yes. so they, I watched the promo today with The Dream where he recapped his takeover experiences. Experience. Yes. Experience. Experience. Um, and it's 
and and, and and we have this discussion from time to time about how these guys just don't like live up when they get up to the main roster. Um, mm-hmm. You are never going to see a promo like that on Raw or SmackDown no, for anybody. Absolutely they fucking spent not. spent like four or five minutes with him, like just like, uh, you know, the part where he was talking about lights and atmosphere and the, and the music and the, and the fog comes up and everything. Like and Sorg, Sorg, you haven't even gotten to the best part of that feud yet. <laughs> no, I've barely gotten to that part, no. into that feud no. yet uh, for that. And I will before Saturday during this event. Um, and uh, Kyrie Sane and uh, well, oh, hold on. I, I I do need to say something about EC3 and Velveteen Dream. Go ahead. Uh, it's gonna be my girlfriend and I's first fight. Really? Or she's a Velveteen Dream fan, and I naturally am an EC. I mean, I'm a Velveteen Dream fan too, but I've been a Mark for EC3 since he was Derek Bateman. So we're gonna fight. I keep telling her this. We're gonna fight. We're gonna have <laughs> dueling chants. It's gonna be great. Well, it's it's the best kind of fights to have, though. Um, it's gonna be a good time. From the chat room, Tina saying that Tyler Bate is a sweetheart as well as Trent. Uh, Mustache Mountain are so much they, fun to watch, and they are. They're they're English. I think they kind of have to be. Sorg, we watched them at Shakara at King of Trios that one year. Mm-hmm. Well, you interviewed Tyler Bate. Yes. Didn't you? Um, no, I don't think did we did interview no. Tyler Bate. I think we did. No, you're thinking uh, Pete Dune, well, Dune and and Mandrews. Dune. 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 The Dune Master. No, I, I, I interviewed them both. Sorg. Yes, Riz interviewed them. Yes, before they became. I almost got my head caved in. <laughs> that, that's not surprising. And then I got my soul crushed by you know, RJ City and Dalton Castle. But yeah, that's yeah. a different story. Yeah, I think they still feel bad about that. Um, no, they do. Yeah, they do. They do. They're like that's that one kid that we. Uh, yeah, that's the up, one weird screwed kid. Screwed up his life. Jeez. It's okay, Riz. You'll get over it. No, I won't. Um, uh Kyrie Sane, I like I I didn't really have they more recently been referring to her as the pirate princess? Because wasn't she like a boating connoisseur or yachtist. something? Yeah, a yachtist. She was a yachting enthusiast. A yachting enthusiast. During- during the May Young Classic, they referred to her as the yachting enthusiast. Enthusiast. When she when she started wrestling more and more in NXT, they were just like, fuck it, she's a pirate. Yeah, <laughs> because JR and Rita didn't have necessarily the best um, commentary. Mm-hmm. But I think JR just saw her with the steering wheel. She's like, oh, she must love yachting. Uh, oh, she is kind of like like the most adorable pirate I've ever seen, though. Uh, <laughs> Virtual was pretty cool. What's that? <laughs> virtual was pretty cute. Bur- virtual was pretty yeah. pretty cute. Okay, okay, Riz. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh. am, am I not supposed to? Like, he's he's virtual looking directly awesome. into the camera before he swings on a fucking rope. Yeah, a little bit of cold yeah. steel there. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I see it. I see. I see it, Riz. We got. We All got. Right. Riz, Same. big fan of Same. Paul Virtual. Bring him um, back. Who we Tina is losing it. What's that? We think Tina's losing the title. You, when? Jeez, I don't know. Um, I don't, she, so she's mostly undefeated. No, she's not undefeated because she didn't lose. She lost no, at the tournament to Kyrie Sane. To Kyrie, Kyrie Sane. Sane. So, so I think it would make sense if she dropped it to Kyrie Sane here. But I think she's got <laughs> a little more going on. I think she's gonna lose it and debut on Raw to take out her friend Ronda Rousey. Mm. What? You we're not gonna have the four horsewomen at Survivor Series? No, I don't think so. Uh horsewomen no, no, four horsewomen explode at WrestleMania. No, no, because we're gonna keep Charlotte and Rhonda as far away as humanly possible so uh, they can so they can make WrestleMania. That's true. They're already on different brands, so maybe next year. I don't know. Because I think I think the other ones need to train up a little bit first, right? Yeah. yeah. They've only been signed not that long, maybe a couple months. Yeah. So give it a little bit of time. We'll see. I think I think she stays on top for a little bit longer. And of course, the big one. Holy crap! It's Tommaso Ciampa. <laughs> fireworks factory! Fireworks factory! Fireworks factory! By the way, am I saying Tommaso Ciampa right? Champa. 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 It's Champa. 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 I don't. Know. I keep right. seeing the tweets. Or the podcast. Gonna, or else I'm going to tell Champa. No. You're saying it don't wrong. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. He is the champ. Uh, you will address him as such. Uh, at Sorgatron. 
<laughs> the the first the first champion that has no theme music. Actually, they they no, that's not true. No, Andre Giant. No. Nah. Well, that's I'm true. not talking like like anybody pre date nineteen anybody pre date nineteen seventy three. I'm have can, can I say okay the first like NXT champion like I, I'm not I, you know pre nineties <laughs> like sure I'm, right. Not the first one that doesn't have. Kids. Theme music and technically, I don't think Vince had theme music when he won. No, no he, he had, had no chance. He, he, had, had, no he chance. had no chance in hell by then. Yeah, that was already out by then. When he won the title, he won the. T- well, he didn't start coming out to no chance until like ninety nine. It was ninety eight and not, no, it was yeah. ninety nine <laughs> when he started coming out because it's the Royal Rumble when he first debuted it. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Pretty sure he before then. I feel like he would have had it before then. Nope. I could be wrong. I'll I will bet you a dollar it was Royal Rumble ninety nine. Well, we do have the WWE Network, so we can find out. Let's, uh, let's do it. Or the internet. Well, or a we chat, can't, or, we or can't a... really. Uh, we can't really judge during the, the WWE Network because they do put in music. That is true because I didn't know that Jericho came out to break the walls down in in it, at yep. WCW Hog Wild in nineteen ninety six seven. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Uh, anyways, Gargano is zero and two at Brooklyn. They're pointing out. Um, Oh, that's why you guys were saying that. Infinity War Part 2, nine months early. Yes. Um, so, yeah. Bobby Snyder saying Horsewomen versus Horsewomen at, at uh, uh, Evolution. Yeah, we can no, see. I don't think so. Yeah, you think yeah. it's too early? We'll see. We'll yeah, see. it's too early for half those people. I wouldn't be surprised. Like, the, stuff, like the, the, the shifts that they make here and there. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they fast track that. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if NXT is not representative of that show. Well, everybody's oh, going no, to be. Gonna be. Yeah, it's they're going to be. It's already no. it, basically everyone's you championship. Know, Nikki Cross was there. No, Riz, no, Riz, they have to be because they're saying over fifty women will be involved in that pay per view. You think over fifty women's gonna be at that at that pay per view? What are they doing? You're gonna have you're gonna have an NXT Women's Championship. Maybe an NXT UK Women's Championship. I can't wait for the Women's Trios title to be defended. Um, let's 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 work on getting a tag title first. <laughs> We're just gonna skip it and go trios. Like any all right, good. All right, who who's your trios champion? Be then. Who, who are my trio champion? I'm gonna go with the Riot Squad. Yeah. All right. So the only trio. Yes. Exactly. Oh, well, they win. Oh, they yeah, win by right. default. They win. Yeah, they would. They they've been the trio the longest. So therefore. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Beastman, are you... The, I, I don't know. You're probably not keeping up too much on NXT. you have any thoughts of these guys? I know a lot of these guys have been through uh, uh, the indies through this area over the years as well. Ciampa and Gargano is going to be a hell of a match again. Oh. I think it's going to be awesome. Last man standing for, for a title on the line. That's incredible. Yep. Uh, other than that, I'm a big mark for the Velveteen Dream. So. <laughs> and it says, I just looked it up, it says right here that they started using No Chance of Hell in 1999. Yeah, I, I actually uh, pulled up the clip where he was first champion. He did come out to No Chance in Hell. Even though he no. was a first man, it didn't make any sense. Score one for the Beast Man. Husk. Yes. Husk. <laughs> Uh, that's not all happening that weekend. Hey, there's well, of course, there's a bunch of other shows. I believe Kevin Gill is promoting a show on a boat. I, I may try and go to this. You should. I don't know. I, I I'm gonna be in New York in the afternoon on Saturday. Go, I may try and go. To go this. watch wrestling on a boat. I have so Uh-oh. many questions for how this works. Uh oh. <laughs> I mean. I, I, I kind of want to do it. Like I feel like because this isn't going to be a big cruise liner. We looked it up. It's like it, it looks like it's one of those like larger ferry boats. So yeah. I don't know how like I, I you know I don't know how steady that's going to be for a wrestling match, right? Like I feel. Well, like, I mean, it, it's org. It's not like they're going over. Um, it's not like the USS Intrepid, or choppy right. seas no, or anything. No, no, like, no, no, no. Yeah, that's true. It's like in the harbor and stuff, so it's probably a little calmer. So, um, we were watching, we were reading the packages at one point over some dinner at Eaton Park, and it's just, it's fascinating. There's, if you get the VIP package, one of the oh. items you get, along with all the meat uh, and it's and canceled. All, what's it's the boat's canceled. Canceled. Oh, no. Well, on to the next well, one. Well, never I, mind. I was, I was looking in to see how much it was, and I was checking the weather. 
I think they might have canceled it because of weather. That's a shame. That's a damn shame. The weather shame. up here has not been good. Well, then I defer well, to you, Alex. Like, Alex Miller is going on the Jericho cruise, so I want a full report if mm-hmm. you have internet. <laughs> because then it is Mike, a if I may, if I may make a suggestion for your wrestling weekend, huh? Uh, Joey Janela is lost in New York. Uh, when is that? That's the seventeenth. That's Friday. Friday, Friday night. Friday night. I, I don't know if I'll be able I'm I'm working. Oh, come <laughs> on. I mean, you're gonna miss Nick Gage versus Haku. Oh, hey, Nick, was, Nick Gage was on Raw last night. He just looks like Dean Ambrose now. Two two people that you can you can believe may have or would kill somebody in a wrestling match. Matt Riddle versus PCO. <laughs> Same thing applies. Teddy Hart is going to be there. Uh, Alex, Teddy- M- Alex Miller is going to loss in New York. So, so yeah. Alex, next week you have to either come on the show or email in to give us a full report on loss in New York, and you need to tell us if Kevin McAllister was there. Uh, yes, yes, he probably will be. He likes wrestling now. Yeah, I know. I mean, he looks very I, skinny. I, I, and- I actually completely did listen to a podcast where apparently the show that they also work on has um, uh, not Kevin McAllister. Um, Macaulay Culkin as a part of it that produces it. So mm-hmm. full circle today for me. Um, anyways, um, do, 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 do. Uh, Tia says that on second thought, there's a better chance of Bailey versus Sasha, last woman standing in evolution. I can see that. You can see that. You can see it too. I mean, I, I think they're going to ride this tag team thing for a little bit. I, like I can see it maybe that. five times in the next few months. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and, and then and then they'll be teaming together and then they'll break up again and they'll team up with the other. Sure, sure. All right. And the show that you're going to need a lot of coffee to get through because it's another standard WWE pay-per-view, which means it's going to take like four or five hours to get through. Sorg, <laughs> Sorg, seven hours. Seven hours? Starts at, fi- starts at five o'clock. The show starts at five o'clock. Oh. Yeah, but I, I I heard that I heard that groan. Mm-hmm. WWE, um, what are you doing? Here's one thing I here's one thing I I don't know if anybody has noticed. Years ago, when we were kids, like when we were all with like twelve, thirteen years old, I I, I know I'm not the only. We all wanted like more wrestling, like on the yeah, season, yeah, because right? you got that little yeah. bit. You got an hour or two a week, and that was it, yeah, right? Now. Now we're in our thirties. I don't know how old everybody else is. I'm thirty two. It's like they have seven hours of wrestling. I just I can't even get past like the first two hours. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But also you don't have to necessarily watch it all in one go. Like it feels like oh, definitely I, don't. I don't think anybody intends for you to watch all the wrestling. Right? Like, um, like is the intention like I mean sure they entice you to watch all the wrestling mm-hmm. but 205 they Live they even entice you to watch like the uh like the bits online because that's where some other stuff comes from right but I, I, I just can't think that anybody except the super fan is consuming all of it or people with podcasts um you know like it's just so much of it just in the WWE trying to keep up with it right yeah. so yeah and, and we talked about like Raw SmackDown is really, especially Raw is is not made for the person that sits there for three hours because that is, I think, such a small percentage of their audience. Mm-hmm. Um, and unfortunately, maybe um, they're kind of making their pay per views the same way. So I it was, uh, I think they did okay when they were here in Pittsburgh for Extreme Rules to keep the crowd into it, but obviously. Mm-hmm. Man, after five hours and a and a giant clock, and we just lost our minds. Yeah, you okay. know, I mean, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of discussions about the crowd there, but it's like, guys, it's it's seven hours of wrestling. Maybe unless you're blowing us away in hour seven, we're gonna do stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah, and that's why they, I think WWE needs pick needs to pick their main events better. Mm-hmm. Like. Uh, if this was if this was me, the match that you think is going to underperform with the fans, mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. Throw that match on first. Throw that match on first because you get the crowd at its hottest point. Like as soon as that FBI warning comes up, 
That is generally one of the biggest pops of the night because you know the show's about to start. Yeah. That's not a joke. Like, that's not even a joke because I remember when we were kids, we used to cheer whenever we saw that because that means the purchase of the pay-per-view went through. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's always one of the biggest I love. Pops. I do love that even when you're in a live crowd and the FBI thing comes up, people in the crowd still cheer. Yeah, for the FBI thing. Well, it's because they know the show's about to start. The show's about to start. Yeah, and, and well, we're yeah. also just very Pavlovian, 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 I've heard of V. Uh, you know, and dealt with that for so many years about the the order going through, right? So, like, like they sh- they should put on like. Reigns and Lesnar should go on first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. It's wow. Good. No, no. Reigns wow. Good. It's good because you're going to get the crowd ads hottest. And even if they're disappointed with the ending, you have everything else after that to build them back up. You have, Plus, you, but you can also go back to like, you could completely put Rhonda because she's a big star too against Alexa for, for the end too. Uh, uh, Beast mm, Man, I, I, think, I think Gay James. He has some thoughts. Yeah. As much as mu- Mike, as much as I wanted to uh, agree to, like I gotta disagree with you, man. You always want to have a any show you want to have a hot opener. Yeah, and there's so many on the card for Sunday. There's so many good matches on there that's gonna open. Like it, it could be any match could be literally a main event match anywhere. Mm-hmm. Chances are they're gonna open up the show with Balor Corbin. Just how because that's what that's it's, it's a, the it's a hot opener. That's, it's a hot I, opener. I, one that could go on the kickoff and no one would really care. True. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, might, it, it might slide down there. That feud is dead. Mm-hmm. That feud is dead. It's it it. The feud is just involved around Finn Balor being small. Mm-hmm. Guess what? if Finn Balor wins, he's still gonna be small. All you've done is just hinder his growth in this feud. Uh. Pun intended. <laughs> oh. Uh. But like I, I don't know. But it's not like it's unheard of to have a world title match go on first. Yeah, they did that. <laughs> but it, it, it's it's unheard of to have Brock Lesnar, who had the title for the how many days, mm-hmm. go on first. Yeah, but that's why it would be interesting. It'd be you, awesome, and, it, and it'd be an awesome slight to him since we're we're already calling him the worst Universal Champion ever. Exactly my point. So I mean, yeah, I kind of get that. Um, you can play in the story. You can have Kurt Angle say, "Oh no, I want Ronda to go on last because guess what, Brock? She's been here." Mm-hmm. Like, but you can't. But, going, to going to your z- just going, going to logistics here. <laughs> he's so he's so he, he's so he's, he's getting so mad that the internet's like like echoing him out. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just gonna. I hand gestures are cracking me up. <laughs> I know, um, but here's the thing: first, you can't have Brock Lesnar come on first. You can't because Brock's on. You have building Braun Strowman. It. Yeah, you do have Braun Strowman. Yep. You have Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens. Yep. Winner gets the, winner that's, gets the briefcase. That's a good. Over. They're not, not going to do I'm anything with that now anyway. Uh, they're not. They're still entry. They right. killed all. In my opinion, I all right. So, so I mean, let's 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 look at this card a little bit um, here. Uh, you know, first of all, you, you got Charlotte, Becky, and Carmella. That should be pretty good. Mm-hmm. Are, are we gonna do predictions too? Or are we just talking? Uh, okay. I think we're just rolling through. I, okay, what do you want to see out of three of these guys? Because everything on NXT, I know we didn't do predictions. But it's basically we're gonna see, see a new a good match. I don't think any of us cared who won, won any of them. Just we want to see. Them. I want to see Gargano win it. I know, right? <laughs> I know, uh, but anyways, from the ladies from SmackDown, what do you who you want who you want to see get this? I, I want to see Becky. Becky, I, I want to see Becky, but I think Carmella is winning it. I say bring it around for Becky too. What do you think? Charlotte wins. Becky turns. Charlotte oh, wins. Becky turns. That's good. That's good. Oh, she's been passed over too many times. See, I I think Becky turns also, but I think she turns mid match and gets uh, caught by Carmella. That that's what I think. Like that seems accurate to me. Seems right. I don't know why. Like it's just they're they're butting heads too much. Charlotte and Becky are. All right, we're gonna go through the rough ones for Mike first here. Um, uh, Ziggler and Seth. Dean Ambrose is back. You guys. 
Yay! By the way, his picture on the SummerSlam page does not match his new hairstyle. <laughs> of course it doesn't. Nope. D- Dean Ambrose now looks like someone took a big thing of silly putty, put it on a picture of Triple H, and just stretched it. Mm. He looks like a bad creator wrestler of Colin Delaney. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Tina- That's a, lo- a long walk. I like oh, that. I lost picture, didn't I? Uh, yeah, you went away. You went away. Just go ahead and just restart the video on there. Uh, Tina's saying, just rolling back for a second, Tina's saying that Becky should turn in that match as well. Um, we have uh, Daniel Bryan and uh, The Miz, finally. Uh, okay, so I want this to be, I said this on Twitter, like, right before we... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want this to be Infinity War Part 1. Okay. I want whoever loses this match to eventually win the WWE title this year and for them to lose the title to the person who wins the match at WrestleMania. So like if so like if Brian wins this match at SummerSlam, yeah. Miz, Miz eventually gets the WWE title and then um Brian takes and then um Miz uh, like Brian wins it back from him at uh WrestleMania. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. All right. Uh, what, what do you think? What do you think, Beastman? I think uh, just how they've built the entire, like how this has been instigating Brian, or even when he was out for two years. I think Miss is going to win by DQ. Okay. So no resolution right off the bat. No. I, I, they could they could stretch it. Also, there's been rumor about Brian maybe not having a contract renewed. Oh yeah, that's so. that's what. He might get a winner because yeah, but, his contract runs out soon. Or maybe Kane comes back. Mayor Kane comes back or, and helps. Or him maybe out. Brian um lets his contract expire, goes and wrestles for something in September. Mm, maybe, maybe against maybe against someone from that town. Who knows? Who Pete, knows? Who's kind of an asshole. Jeff Hardy um, Jeff no. Hardy Jeff Hardy and Nakamura, which is weird. I don't know. Uh, I got uh, Seems weird since just uh, Randy Orton's been beating up uh, Jeff Hardy and trying to rip his mm-hmm. gear off. Randy Orton was uh, Randy Orton. Randy is... Randy's creepily stalking Jeff Hardy on SmackDown. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's fascinated with his ear holes. That's, that's Randy weird. Orton's been creepy for a while. Yeah, and not even. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think I think this was supposed to be a triple threat, but because of the recent stories about Randy Orton that have come out, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I I could see Nakamura just straight up winning. Okay. Okay. Uh, no. I don't know. Like on this one, I don't know. I want. I kind of think Nakamura is going to win, but I wouldn't be surprised if they put it on Jeff Hardy. I think I think we go with Nakamura on this one. He's the you know we're kind of building the newer guy, right? Yeah, Nakamura. So and he needs he needs a lot after that weird series he did with AJ Styles. I yeah. feel so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they're trying to build Nakamura back up because Hardy's are because they're they're already reestablishing. Yeah, Orton versus Hardy. So they got like you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, what do you think about uh, Ronda and uh, Alexa Bliss there? Ronda, it, it's obviously going to happen. Yeah, it's obviously not not another bout of shenanigans like we've had the last couple matches. Yeah, it's gonna, it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I feel really bad for Alexa Bliss. <laughs> Why? Why Wait, Alexa uh, Bliss is involved in like the one of the highest profile women's matches ever? Um, she's going to get tossed around like a rag doll. Uh, like no, like because Alicia Fox is very tall. Yeah, Alexa Bliss is not. Isn't Ron that only throw her through the ring? Mm-hmm. Um, I go ahead. I I was going to pick Ronda, and then I realized something. Hmm. Alexa is double jointed. <laughs> really? Oh <laughs> oh shit! Like, you're right, Riz. You can pretend her arm's broken, and. You know, sneak out a win here. Mm. That'd, be, that'd be real. In- you know, that'd be real dick move, yeah, wouldn't it? Damn it! And they've done that gimmick a few times before. I could see them doing that again. I could like, see them doing that maybe again. get a count out win or something. 
I because, don't know. Because you're assuming Rhonda hasn't watched the product, so she wouldn't know. Oh, no, she wouldn't know. Jeez. Uh, team- honestly, honestly, nobody should know in, like, since it didn't happen in three months ago. That's true. From the chat, we're just catching up with the comments real quick. Alice Miller is saying that Dean looks like he got out of prison. He kind of always, already has, though. Uh, um, he, it, it, it just looks like he got out of a different prison. This oh, time. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, 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 he was in maximum security this time as yeah. opposed to one where he was just in a drunk tank nightly. <laughs> Tina is saying that uh, um, uh, Daniel Bryan's contract actually expires in September. So uh, give you a little yeah. context for that. Uh, real quick, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles. I I can't believe this match that's amazing in TNA is happening for a WWE World Title. Like I, that's I hope still. They don't I hope they don't kill it. Yeah, I hope they don't kill it like they killed the the Styles Nakamura match. Yeah, yeah. I hope it doesn't get weird. But I I mean, kick someone in the dick, then we should all just cancel our network. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't have that match deliver at SummerSlam, there's a problem, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Oh, what do you think, Beastman? Third, oh. Oh, no, you're not Beastman, you're Riz. I, I, for myself, I want to see Samoa Joe win. Mm, that'd be amazing to see him as WWE champ. Yeah. AJ's had it for a while. For a while. What is it, like 11 months now since he's had Something it? like that, yeah. Yeah, because he won it on a European tour, and the last time he defended it against Nakamura twice, didn't he? SummerSlam and the month after, so October would be... I think three there. times. Plus mm-hmm. plus in uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So... Um, October and November is when he won it. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, it had maybe... Shit. Because I'm trying to think of this. Oh, yeah, it was October, because November last year, they had, they had Lesnar and AJ mm-hmm. each other, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it was supposed to be uh, Jinder versus Lesnar, and then AJ won the belt. Yeah, switcheroo, and then somebody got into yoga. Uh, yeah, and then, of course, <laughs> Brock and Roman. Man, if they're not dropping at the Roman. You mean, whoa, whoa. You mean, you mean oh, never mind. I thought you said Braun. Brock oh, no. Uh, it may be Braun and Roman. I don't know. I think Braun comes yeah. up. I, I really think Braun comes out with the title at the end of the night. <laughs> Or, I I I real I want to hope Braun's losing the briefcase. Really? Yes, because he doesn't fucking need it. Mm. The man flips over ambulances on the regular. Mm-hmm. Besides, if if Braun was really going to cash it, like he would just make it a triple threat, like Rollins did. That's true. Uh, I don't see him winning. You don't see who? who? I don't see Strowman winning. You don't see oh, Strowman okay. getting this one. I mean, I, 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 if he if he re- made, if he retains the briefcase, I see him trying to cash in, but something happens because okay. they always have that. They always have that fake out, one fake out, where maybe, it's like maybe I'm one cash in now, and then somebody else sweeps it up. Maybe one more Looney Tunes uh, event with uh, Braun Strowman and Kevin Owens. I think somewhere down the line, Kevin Owens cost him. What do you, what do you think? I, what do you think, Beastman? The uh, like the obvious is going to be titles getting changed. Mm-hmm. Either right. either Reigns is going to get it or Strom is going to get. It. Now, if Lesnar went, like it will be interesting if Lesnar keeps it. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. they, I know he's trying to go back to fight UFC right now, and I ain't. Mean, that's I know. Like this, when that last time I was here, we were talking about the same match, if I'm not mistaken, before Mania. So mm-hmm. we were talking about the same thing. I think. It, I mean, as much as Mike hates it because he wants this to be the first match, it's a money match. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, they would have had me invented f- six times in the last three years. I think mm-hmm. if it wasn't, like, it, it, they've. It's been different every time, which is nice to say, but it's always like 90% Lesnar, 10% Reigns. Yeah. And I just don't know this time. I It's going to be like, I'd like to see Strowman cash in a win, but. It's the last match. It's regardless of what you think, it's going to be the hottest match. It's going to be a short match because everybody has a stake in what they want to happen. 
and it's, it's not going to be a short match. It's it's, it's, match. it's whatever it is. You're either want Brock to win really bad and hate Roman. You want you want Brock out of there, or you want Braun to come in. Either way, either way, the reactions are going to be strong for this one, and I think they're fine with that as a last match. If so. they if they can make it like Goldberg Lesnar from WrestleMania allowed two years ago, mm-hmm. that'll be good. There you go. There you go. We'll see. We'll see. Either way, uh, and we'll be doing, of course, if you're here in the local area, we'll be doing watch parties for both NXT TakeOver and SummerSlam this weekend. So uh, go check out info for that over on our Facebook page for Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can join us here in person and hang out with us watching the show. And uh, it's the first time we've done a TakeOver one. First one, we haven't had a wrestling show during a TakeOver that we had to go film. So thank you, local indies. Uh, and uh, we'll be a part of that. Hey, want to give a shout out to our friend Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceonBroadway.com, right up the streets here in Beachview uh, on Broadway, as well as uh, over in Carnegie, PA, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and over at the East End. They've been supporting us for a good long time. Thank you so much to those guys for doing that. And hey, they even sent us an extra pizza because I think, uh, so, well, they knew the Beast Man was coming. So. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so maybe he'll grab that here on the break. We'll be back with a big question, and we're going to ask uh, the Beast Man about his latest Walmart trip and more when we come back right after this. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. We are back. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We do have Mad Mike. Up in Poughkeepsie, New York, hanging out with us. We do have The Riz with us. Oh, I hit the wrong thing. There he is. That's me. There I am. There you are. Up here. We got the Beast Man. There's some some pretty good pizza. He's been enjoying some Slice on Broadway. Got got him going with that sponsorship uh, message, (laughs) didn't we? There you are. So, um, and uh, but what you mentioned, you got a wrestling show this weekend? Mm -hmm. Where are you going to be? Saturday, I'm going to be in Massillon, Ohio for Mid-Ohio Wrestling. There you go. You you get around like the Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania areas a bit. Trying to, trying to. Beastman, get the Beastman in your town. Tell your local wrestling promoter at Beastman Husk on the Twitters. Damn straight. That's right. You you will not be disappointed. It's a, it's a lot of fun to watch a Beastman match. Um, and if you have tiny wrestlers for uh, him to throw around, that is also a plus. There you go. So the. <laughs> Uh, well, the Philly, uh, I keep messing up the name, the Philly Murano experience, Marino experience, Marino experience yeah. from Cleveland. Yeah, that guy almost landed in the front row. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, it is time for the big question. Actually, Beastman, you had a big question for us mm-hmm. that I kind of liked uh, based on our conversation before uh, here. So uh, what was that question, sir? What is the perfect wrestling match, in your opinion? The perfect wrestling match. A perfect match. The match that you think takes all matches away from everything. Now, do you do you want an example of the perfect wrestling match that we've seen, or a dissection of what the perfect match is to us? You go ahead with yours, Mr. Wheaton. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Mad Mike should answer this because he's usually the one dissecting matches, <laughs> right? Uh, well, yeah, I've been I've been known to dabble in that. Mm-hmm. Um, he is also our uh, in-house forensic wrestling scientist. Yes, um, I have a lab coat and everything. Put it on. Um, you do have a lab coat. Like I've seen it. I do. Yeah, I know. That wasn't a joke. I have, I have a lab coat. I'm also a scientist. God damn it. Put yes. it on then. Oh. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not. I, it's all the way over there. Oh. Uh, I don't feel like walking. Hey, um, was your perfect, ma- <laughs> Professor oh, Mad per- Mike? What is your perfect match? <laughs> The perfect match that I've seen, I think, would have to go to Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho from uh, WrestleMania 19. Uh, just story going into it. Uh, just everything about that match. The story going into it. The story that was told in the match. Um, the finish. And the post match, just everything about it is like a finely woven story. Mm-hmm. Like it really is. Like it's it's you got like the the student becomes the master thing, like I don't want to be the next Shawn Michaels, I want to be the first Chris Jericho, like 
They have the the simultaneous kip ups, Jericho doing sweet chin music. Like it doesn't even end in sweet chin music too. That's the best part. It ends on a roll up, and then Sean like uh, Jericho. Sean goes for the hand. Jericho puts pushes the hand away and gives him a big hug, and then low blow right in the dick. Mm-hmm. Like perfect end to end. Like end to end. It's just a. It's a perfect story. It really is, both in the ring and out of the ring. Hmm. Hmm. What about you, Riz? You have one. Uh, come back to me, sword. Come back to you. I jeez. Because I... I'm I'm in I'm between saying a thing and describing a thing. Which, if I describe it, it's not going to sound like the match I have in mind. So so I me I I've been talking a bit about this one match from a few months ago. Um, that I I couldn't get it out of my head. Um, the the Jonathan Gresham and uh, David Starr match from Super Indie, it went like forty minutes, and I switched it, so mm-hmm. I was kind of like, I kind it kind of took me out of. So usually when I'm switching a wrestling show, like I my brain's kind of in a different spot. I'm not really watching, enjoying the match. I'm more technically kind of looking at it, right? And this match, I kind of like I stopped calling it. I told the guys, I'm like, because I knew the match was gonna be in the ring. Because, you know, the way that those guys work, right? It wasn't going to be all flippy, flying out of the ring, and having to follow and call stuff as much. Um, so I'm just like, guys, you know your spots. Stay with the action. I'm just going to roll with this. Because um, I had kind of a feeling about it. And it was, you know, kind of that end-to-end story, right? There was the, this is the third time in a row Jonathan Gresham was doing Super Indie, right? So there was that story. And he would always get to the end of Super Indie the last two years and couldn't pull it off, Right. He was battling. I think his knee got messed up because he had a, a match with Jackson in the first round. Work that through. I can't remember who he had in the second round. Um, and was Janela? Was it? It might have been Janela. Uh, jo- Joey Janela. So going from that to you know, you know, a lot of submissions, a lot of counters. Um, you know, just a really well wrestled. You know, good story match again ground a ground game match too uh and and for that again kind of top to bottom that story uh like you were talking about with your match mad mike um i just you know it's still it still kind of sticks with my head about why that was such a great match to witness when i'm watching other stuff like new japan and things like that that do probably you know probably the most capable you know good wrestling matches i'm watching in new japan Right for the most part, and and I keep relating it to that. And definitely, I, I, nothing on G one I thought really beat on that on that storytelling side, you know. But it wasn't also stuff on G one wasn't really at that Wrestle Kingdom level. I felt too, you know, for a different, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of different vibes going on there. I thought Omega Kyle Bushi had a great match. Oh, I thought it was great, and that's yeah. not to take away. I mean, it was amazing stuff, right? But um, but that's the one that was kind of stuck in my head at the moment. So. Okay, sword. I, I I normally shout really loud when you do this, but that match that you mentioned was the match I was going to get. Oh shit! <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. It's fine mm-hmm. because you and and then you described it as as eloquently as you put it, and I'm gonna, just going to add. I love that match because, as a fan, as somebody who is sitting in the back, not not you know focusing on what cameras go where what the, watching that match live it was fucking entertaining you know like I, like, like, like the, the, the backstory that having that like you said the having the backstory having everything happen even if you just stuck those two in the ring together mm-hmm. fresh mm-hmm. david Starr versus jonathan gresham would be amazing no matter what you know what the cool thing I'm just realizing about that match was, why I love that and why the switching kind of worked? As a fan watching wrestling, I was picking the angle of the fight I wanted to see. Right? Yeah. Like it was it was like I got to play my own interactive, you know, version of watching the match. And that's what we what we pulled together for the edit. By the way, you can get that match right now. <laughs> yeah, need wrestling wrestling US. US. Yes. Um just playing to... it out there. <laughs> there you go. You can get you can get my match on the WWE Network. 
Nine ninety nine. If you're a new subscriber, it's free for the first thirty days. <laughs> Which means you get SummerSlam for free. Yay! For free and NXT Takeover Four. Jeez. Anyways, uh, do you have? No, I, thought we were, I thought we were saying where we could get our match. But yeah, that's I'm, fine. I'm, that's I'm, fine. I'm, no, no. That's I'm, back. I'm just going back to what you said, uh, Sorg, and just going through like the description that you made. I just need the one word, and it was entertaining. Mm-hmm. If it's entertaining and keeps my interest mm-hmm. for the entire match, that's as perfect as you can get. Probably a match that would have my attention after five hours of wrestling in an arena. There you go. Take note. Beastman, what is your perfect match? Oh, I got... I, I hope you like our answers. I do. I got two of them, because okay. uh, Mad Mike got me thinking here for a minute. Oh. The, my personal favorite match of all time that I consider the perfect match is a old All Japan match from 1994 uh, or 90. It was wow. 94, 96, wow. 94, 95, 96. It was uh, Mitsuharu Misawa against Kenta Kobashi and Kobayashi. I'm sorry, no here's this. He's probably gonna hit me <laughs> if I pronounce it wrong. <laughs> well, because like if you watch me, everybody's going Kobashi, but it's Kobayashi mm-hmm. and. Uh, the, I like the the ground, the, the hard-hitting Japanese style. And if you had ever watched that match, it's it has everything from the just it's a baby it's a baby face baby face match, which is really hard to tell a good story. Mm-hmm. But it it was just so well done. And it really was a match that like I started watching maybe like a year in. It kind of like developed how I work in the ring. So to me, that's a perfect match for as a thing. Like for me, that's my perfect match because they had like they went outside, they wrestled, they fought on the stage. They did. It, it would be a match that people would a standard indie match today is what it, is what it is really because a bunch of false finishes. But it was in what year? 95, 96. 95, 96. So they like not not a time when a lot of those were happening. Right? Yeah, like the big uh, the big IWGP. I, I, it could have been all Japan, but it could have been New Japan. I don't. Yeah, I'm trying to look them up on New Japan World to see if that match is in there. I can show it to you here. In uh, a I, I, I'm sorry. I, I have such a. I, I honestly have a hard time with the Japanese names here and there. Uh, it's K O B A S H I. Uh, versus who? M I S A W A. I-S-A-W-A. Yeah, there's like th- they've wrestled each other a bunch of times, but I got like there's this. Let's see here, if I can find it. Yeah, I don't see the two names coming together. On I'll, I'll look. I'll look. I think it's, all Japan. it's on YouTube then. Okay. Anyways, uh, there you go. And I think the best, the per, the perfect match for me with the story mm-hmm. has to be Hogan versus Macho Man from WrestleMania Five. Hogan Macho Man WrestleMania Five. Yeah. The yeah. whole story built, the whole year yeah. built up to that match. Yeah, was just. You ever hear the Bruce Pritchard podcast about that? Yeah, it was like about the little things they did yep. over that year, like to see that they, you know, that there was like that there's that much meticulous little things, but that you know, thinking this is like carried over SummerSlam and a main event yep. and this and this over over the entire no. year. Talk, talking about that match. It's very possible my perfect match could be supplanted with this Ciampa Gargano match on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Because if you watch their progression of like the stuff they did as DIY to their matches against each other, they're doing the same thing Hogan and Savage did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're bringing back all the callbacks. It's just they happen to be a lot more plus. Safe. Insane callbacks. But Plus, they have social media to play with, which they think they've been doing. Oh God! And to a T. Tommaso Ciampa is. I'm not sure who taught him how to tweet, but he should teach everyone how to tweet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ciampa is so, like, the best I've seen in social media since, like, Kevin Owens or Matt Hardy. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Easy three. Wait. Yeah. EC3, EC3 but EC3 posts a lot of like gym selfies and stuff like that. I like, love you know, and 
and I love that we're calling out Matt Hardy as a perfect like a tweeter these days when we used to complain about Matt Hardy on social media for the longest time. And and those <laughs> complaints are still valid. Yeah, they were. I mean, doing, no, no, he was really horrible. But it's also probably when he was doing a lot of drugs. So, yes, that's, that's why the, that, that's that's what our complaint would be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we could tell you were on drugs. Yes. Um, <laughs> let's see. Tina Tina's in the chat room saying she would like to see Will Ospreay versus Johnny Gargano. Or Marty Skrull versus The Miz. Yeah. Ooh, that would have been a good match. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, given time. I I also would have loved to see, like, in their primes, Shawn Michaels versus Randy Savage. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I wish that would have happened. Uh, I so well, wish that would have happened. All right, this is the perfect match to me on paper. If you actually watch, because it exists. This match exists. It's not terribly great, but it's passable, okay? Um, the match is, oh, it was on the Macho Man collection. It's Macho Man and Bret Hart against Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair mm. with Jim Ross and I think either Vince or King on commentary and Earl Hebner as the referee. Jeez. Like, like on paper, if you look at that, you're like, that's a fucking barn burner. And it was like it, a it was like a house show match somewhere. Yeah, it was just a house show match somewhere, and it's <clears throat> it's fine, it's passable, but it's it's like um, it's it's not with Sean as prime, mm -hmm. and it, I think it's Flair right before he goes back to WCW too. And this is is it this is from the is this from the Randy Savage cream of the crop? I believe so. Yes, because I, I think that it, it is on network under under one of the collections. It looks like, yeah. Um, let's see when this conversation, Macho Man, Savage, Bret Hart. Oh, is. actually, if, if you look on, if you look online on YouTube, there's a Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels promo on Macho Man and Bret Hart. Oh. <laughs> and then there's a Macho Man and Bret Hart promo on Flair and Shawn Michaels. I'm going to drop the one that I just found on the network in the chat room for you guys. Um, uh, and, uh, Beastman, if you find that YouTube, um, if you can drop that in the chat room Absolutely. too, so we can pass that along or if we even, we can pass it on the wrestling Mayhem show group. Uh, for you guys to check out. So, well, thanks, guys. I, I, so now we know the perfect matches to watch out for. You know, you know what's funny, honestly, uh, that the one promo where you hear Savage say "lost your eyes for Elizabeth," that that <laughs> one promo has stuck in my head. Like the first time I heard it was '91 when mm -hmm. I was first got into wrestling, and just hearing that, it, like today, I'm at work. I'm Washing my hands and just out of the blue, I just like say lost in her eyes just for because just randomly <laughs> popped in my head. And my co worker looked at me like I was crazy. He's like, Oh, <laughs> just walked away. I sometimes you when I'm in your eyes for Elizabeth, lost in her eyes. So, oh, so, yeah. Sometimes when I get a cup of coffee, I do the cup of coffee promo in part. <laughs> I guess <laughs> it's the cup of coffee. You know, it, it, it's great. Like, it's just funny how, like, it's been so many years since all that's it, all that's happened, and it's still relevant to us, you know. Still relevant it, to this day. It, 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 there are just some performers who can get one phrase over that they're not even trying to get over, but they just say it so memorably. Yeah, that, like with a tear in my. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what kind of wrestling fan you are. If you're at least somewhat of a wrestling fan, you know exactly like what time of night that phrase was said because it was right after the fucking rumble. I've, like, I've said that in promos myself before when I was bulldozer. Actually, whatever. <laughs> if I if I find it, I'll show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> With a tear in my eye, this is the greatest moment of my life. <laughs> Where the hell is this video at? That's awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And please let us know what do you think your perfect match is out there, too. And uh, and you can tell our friends, too. Our good friends over at OccupyProWrestling.com. Hey, they're part of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Uh, so we we'll give them a shout for that. Also, guys, please check out their website. They support the Wrestling Mayhem Show. They've been reposting our stuff for a good while. So we're glad to bring them officially into the fold over there. Uh, because pro wrestling is a wild and crazy art form, and Occupy Pro Wrestling is here to look at what makes it fun, featuring articles, blogs, and a podcast that brings you interviews with fellow fans. Occupy Pro, pro Wrestling is putting the smart back in smart marks. Check it out at OccupyProWrestling.com. There's the latest podcast over there. 
um, with uh, a big man on campus uh, over there. Oh, oh, we got we got some wrestling going on. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm sorry, Ke- Kevin Lee Davidson is his latest one, and uh, and he's uh, and, and I've been sending him fans. I'm hoping some fans from our neck of the woods get in on that podcast because I think we got an interesting crew of people over here in the area and uh, connect with our friends on the West Coast connection. The f- only the first one. This is the first podcast from the West Coast on the Sorgotron Media Network. So glad to have them on board. Eat. You may see me on the uh, Talking Chikara back then. Yeah, you were on Talking Chikara. Chikara I mean, I might be back on, uh, depending on if I survive this bear attack that I've been summoned to. Bear attack? What? Yeah. What are you talking about? I'm going to send it to you through your Facebook. Oh, awesome. Uh, my, My best friend, Frantic, Sorg. Oh yeah, yeah. You've been sending me these DMs lately. Like you're you're DMing with one of the guys from Chicago. I haven't, I haven't been sending you DMs. Frantic has been sending me DMs. Yeah, yeah. So I've been trying to befriend this man, you know, for science. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all I get back is, you know, the simple "you'll experience a bodily explosion soon." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? And I would let you get mauled by a bear, but you deserve much worse. Hmm. Where's watching, I'm scared for you. I saw a thing yeah, on the news today it. where a guy got arrested for taking a selfie at a uh, as a reservation up in uh, up in uh, Alaska where bear, for bears. Like there's like they have like these like live nature sites like where you can just watch bears in their natural habitat. There's yeah. a guy actually walked in. On the live feed, took a selfie with the bears while they were trying to get salmon on there going upstream. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Gasless who try to get who tries to get selfies with the lava in Hawaii. Oh God! <laughs> I did. Get, you're talking to the guy that did get a selfie last week with a bomb robot. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but was it currently checking out a bomb? No, no, no. It was just hanging out. It was just hanging out. And then ever since, everybody's been sending me Johnny Five gifts. Which well, I yes. really appreciate because I love Chore Circuit. So. As they should. Sword. Yes, they should. Um, yes, they should. Uh, Sword, we need to talk about something. What? <laughs> okay. I think there's a problem with Elias. What's wrong with Elias? He's too good at what he does. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm being serious. He's too good at what he does. So he doesn't get matches on the big cards. He doesn't get matches at all lately, Anywhere. does he? No, not really. Which I don't like, know. Is that a problem? I mean, I, will, oh, I mean, let's, probably not. Probably not for his checkbook, but uh, or or his body, or his physical health. But he ain't gonna win title shots by playing a guitar. I okay, all right. I kind of counter. I don't know if Elias is the kind of wrestler or character that needs to ever get a title shot or win a belt. Uh, I hate that argument. Okay. I hate, I hate that argument. Um, that, no, that that argument, like, I hear that all the time about people, oh, he doesn't need the title. Like, everyone needs the fucking title. No, no. There are some people who could use the title more, but everyone needs the title. But, Look at Kev Owens. Kevin yeah, Owens has been treading water for two years. Yeah, yeah. What, what was that, Beastman? Give me the belt, kid. <laughs> but but seriously, what do you think about this? As a fellow, oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to find a video of the bear get, guy taking selfies with the bear. Okay, <laughs> oh, okay. Go, ahead. <laughs> go ahead. What do you think about the fact that Elias isn't like getting a lot of matches, but he's like doing a performance in New York City Wrestle he's the doing... SummerSlam weekend. Uh, he's getting paid like everybody else's, and probably more because he's got product out there. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, yep. I mean. He's he's supposedly doing a performance at SummerSlam, which is just code for Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley's going to kick his ass. Good, it's something for him to do. It, but, it, if, hey, it's on the card. You don't okay. One thing I've one thing that it took a long time for me to understand as a as a man of the wrestling. But if you're if you're trying to build a story, you don't have to have you don't need to wrestle every show, no. even the big shows. Even if you make an appearance, a segment, or something, you're still on the show. Mm-hmm. So he's doing something. He's on air. He's still relevant. 
they're not like he's on there, like he's going to have a match of Raw that he's not going to be on pay per view for like four months, or he's not going to be on there for four months. He's actually, they're still pushing him. They're pushing him the right way. When the time comes for the big match, that's when he'll wrestle. You know what I mean? That's where the big blow off, that's when the big payoff comes in. Mm-hmm. But isn't that SummerSlam? No. They've been, they've they, been doing not necessarily. Five, they got 12 pay per views a year. They got to have main events for all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. It's just the only the only confusing part seems like there's a problem because he also wasn't at WrestleMania. Like 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 in, in an advertised match. Oh, well, I'll counter. He had a he had a he, so he basically show. he basically opened for Undertaker by having a confrontation with John Cena. Yeah, and and, and I mean he wasn't advertised. He wasn't advertised. Does, well, he wasn't. Does that matter? Does that really matter? I think it does. Mm. Okay. I think it does because, like, I don't know. I, it just seems like he's too good at getting heat and everything in his segments where they don't feel the need to book him in matches. I'm like, but then he's not going to be taken seriously when he does get that shot. So, mm, I don't know because about that. He's I, in a match, he loses. I don't Do you see... Even I'm you not, know what? I'm not going to discount Elias as a wrestler. Drift away. I'm, I don't mean to discount him as a wrestler, but I don't see necessarily. I don't think. I don't think Elias as a character or anything is going to be put in a position, or needs to be put in a position where he needs to go have a five star <coughs> match with Seth Rollins. You know what I mean? Like, but but not that. He did. What's that? He already did have a five star match with Seth Rollins. Right, but I, I, I don't think him not wrestling for like maybe I, he has literally. I think he's had like a match a month on Raw on average, right? Yeah, and it's usually a tag team match. Look, or I'll, a multi man. WWE was in wheeling for a house show before the last extreme, four extreme roles. Yeah, all right, Elias. I was there, Elias. Uh, all he did, he came out did a segment. He was in a twelve man tag. Mm-hmm. He he did this, he did his thing. He did what the people wanted to see. Did you say a twelve man tag. Twelve man tag. It was literally all the tag teams on Raw in one big match. It was nuts. Wow. Gee, wow. <laughs> we got everybody. We have to do something with them, I yeah. guess. That night. <laughs> so but the only weird thing about this placement mm-hmm. is the placement of what he's, what Elias is scheduled to do. Mm-hmm. He has a concert Saturday. Yes. During takeover. Right. Well, it's technically it, before takeover. It starts at it, five. It's before takeover? It technically starts at five, but if you're going to take over, there's you no have to be to you have to get there at five though. It, yeah. it's across the city, right? I mean it's so, not like yeah, next door. So, so pretty much door, I'd give it a shot. It's a hop, so, skip, and jump. Yeah, so yeah. pretty much you have to not get tickets for the the show, not want to watch amazing matches. Again, again, I want I want to roll back to WWE doesn't do the programming for everybody to be able to watch everything. <clears throat> and I think, well, that's... yeah, Miz and Mrs. is up against Two Hundred Five Live. Yeah, no, that's not a. I mean, not to make it convenient, <clears throat> they just make sure there's well, something, you, that's you, something no. to bring you in, right? Um, no, that no, definitely. I mean, be, otherwise, at USA would be miffed about um, WB telling you to go to their network after the show, right? Actually, oh, they, actually, they, they do do that. They they tell you to stick around for Ms. and Mrs. Well, it was Smack. bad, but I mean, like Monday night, instead of sticking in uh, sticking in for uh, American Ninja Warrior or whatever is on after Raw, I have no idea. Uh, it's like uh, hey, table for three. They go have, watch uh, Table for Three, right? Um, but no, I I think. I don't think with all the YouTube stars. I don't think this is as big of an issue that uh, that WWE <clears> considers <throat> because um, both will draw. <laughs> There's enough Elias fans that will pick him over Takeover because Takeover usually probably sells out anyways, right? But so. still, it's Takeover in New York. Yes, people want to go to see that. Yeah, yeah. But NXT fans are different than main roster. Let me say, let me, okay, let me, the WWE fans are not all NXT fans. Yeah, exactly. I'm yeah. more worried about him on SummerSlam. Yeah, like, I'm concerned about this because it, it it doesn't feel like he's ever going to get like he's putting in a lot of work, mm-hmm. like getting this character over and everything. Mm-hmm. But every time 
the physicality aspect of it comes in, he's almost made to be a joke. So, G- give it time. Give it time. It's gonna work out. Rome it wasn't time. built a day. Give it time. Nope. I, he'll okay. Be a, he'll be right. our title he's, champion for years. I'll it, call it right it, now. It, I, man, Mike, it's it's going to be okay. Okay, it's all right. Okay, it's professional wrestling. I want to talk. I want to talk with Beast Man here for a minute. I don't know if you saw the image we used. I saw it from your Twitter. I, I love that you go to Walmart in your gear. <laughs> <laughs> there's a picture. He's in the he's in the loincloth. I'm not going to tell you if there's anything under the loincloth. you got to watch a wrestling show to figure it out with him. Uh, and your boots. And thankfully, you were wearing a t-shirt. Looking at produce? What happened there? I was hungry. I wanted a salad. So. <laughs> Long okay, long st- the the short version of the story was had a double shot last Sunday. Uh, I was coming back from the Ken Ju- the Zoltan Ken Juga benefit mm-hmm. from up here, and then I had to go do Black Diamond. Didn't really have time to get anything to eat, so I knew it was the main event down Black. I knew I was working in the main event that night. Had a couple minutes to stop at Walmart get something to eat, so I just grabbed, look around, try and looked at. I saw a HLS. Fortunately, a person was with me, took a picture, and then I just, he sent it to me. I'm like, oh, put it on Facebook. Why not? So, and yeah, so I'll probably end up on peopleofwalmart.com here eventually. That but is that amazing. Is- and probably not the <laughs> weirdest thing on people of Walmart, I want to just point out, but uh, there's a picture for you guys on video. <laughs> it, it, it seems like you've been very memeable the last few weeks, because there's also, I don't know what promotion you were in. Where you hopped out of the ring and went through the floor. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, that was at Quaker City Wrestling. Uh, they did a they do a thing every year called Dropkick Diabetes, and it's a great cause. Matt does a good job every year with this. Is actually, the first year I was able to perform it. Supposed to last year, but I had a knee injury uh, going in, and the night before I wrestled up a fight society and. Uh, Reaggravated, so I wanted to take it easy. So this year was the first year I got to do it, and it was fun. And uh, the backstory, the whole story behind or the floor in the building was uh, they used it for shuffleboard, I think. Some sort of <laughs> – they used it for something like that. So I guess uh, during the Battle Royal, the – I guess one of the corners sunk into the – sunk into the floor already so oh, so it was already giving way so the, you did not start this no i did not start this thank god and uh they they before they finished the match they fixed it so the show was going on so by then people were already done forgot that the floor has already been messed up so i'm in the ring doing my thing why ronnie starks would be a good idea to hit me from behind i don't know he runs, I go out, I try to chase him. Next thing I know, my I am down into my knees in the floor. And if we watch a video here, I'll do commentary. <laughs> oh, that's on a delay. They've already seen oh, that a minute ago. That. And whoop, there it is. Uh, I'm dropping in the chat room as well. But you know what? That's not going to stop me from getting his little skinny ass. So, <laughs> Well, chunky ass, sorry. <laughs> and uh, actually, that was a video from someone on, I found out on Snapchat. And I think, and I thought to myself, you know, this would be something like, this could be something that could get some hits. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I loaded up on my page and 9,000 hits in two days. So. Jeez. Yeah. Jeez. And I understand like it's getting, it's getting some attention. So maybe mainstream attention as well. I don't know if that's out there yet or not, but I, I've been hearing some, some rumblings go around. Yeah. So. so. If, it, if this is my claim to fame in the wrestling business, so be it. So, uh, <laughs> at least I can finally say I made it to national TV. There you go. There you go. <laughs> the, the Beast Man, uh, make sure your ring is your, 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 not your ring. The ring's never been a problem. Oh, has it? Contrary, my friend. Oh, no. Now, now, so is this one of those, like, I was there in, uh, in Cleveland the time that Rhino and Jason Bain were fighting and, uh, right before intermission at Resolution. Up at the Nautica stage. Yeah. And the ring collapsed. Haven't had that happen to me yet. No. I've had multiple ring ropes broken on me though before. So. Well, that was, I mean, one of those ring ropes was kind of questionable on Saturday. So, yeah, yeah that happens, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it happens quite a bit with me, so. <laughs> so awesome. Uh, but you guys can check out the video, uh, uh, Beastman Husk on Twitter, of course. And just uh, look for Beastman on the Facebook, right? Yep. All right. 
Um, so, and we pulled that up for you. So go check that out. And again, you know, tell your promoters get the get the Beast Man on there. All right. Uh, so I want to give a shout out to where am I giving a shout out? Hey, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Thrifty Podcast. Um, today's sentimental attachment to things, and including wrestle memorabilia. That's kind of went through. Toddy is the one that came in here with all those wrestle buddies. If you remember, if you've been, uh, checked out the show a couple months ago, um, but uh, yeah, Toddy's sentimental attachment to things other people have uh, forgotten and tossed aside might only be rivaled by Virgil's sentimental attachment to his former WWE career. Ooh. 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 Uh, can Ooh. you can you wow. guess which one has a great podcast talking about the happiness their sentimental attachment brings? I kind of Virgil. Worry. No, no, no. It's not Virgil. It's Toddy. Uh, check him out. The Thrifty, Thrifty Podcast on the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network at SorgatronMedia.com or look up Thrifty Podcast on your Facebook page. Uh, and check them out. If you, and if you want to chat with our audience over here, uh, hit up uh, May- Mayhem Advertising. Talk to producer Missy over there at info at sorgatronmedia.com. And thank to her, thanks to her for uh, trying to keep this show together <laughs> as we get here through the... I'm getting the shake of the head, of course. Hello. All the Mayhemers love you. All right, guys. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Who wants to go first? And you guys in the chat room as well. Hmm. Um, I, <laughs> uh, I I learned that the um, two hundred five live is putting on some pretty good matches. They are, and they have been f- pretty much since WrestleMania. I feel. Yeah. Um. I I know if anyone's fallen off the two hundred five live bandwagon, I highly, highly, highly encourage. Um, everyone to watch the Hideo Itami versus Mustafa Ali match. Mm-hmm. Holy shit snacks. It was real, real good. And like uh, probably the best match I've seen on WWE TV that's not NXT since like February. They're doing a thing where Ali, um, what was his injury that he got that put him out for a little bit? They didn't really say. They just they're they're saying like um exhaustion. Exhaustion basically. or something like that. And he basically like collapsed at the end of the match. Yeah. He he was getting ready to do the 054, but as he like perched on the top rope, he kinda like fainted a little bit and Atami just like put him in the tree of woe and just kept drop kicking him to death. Oh. But Jeez. I mean that's the finish, but the match is fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and it's That's one of those like usually, usually when there's like the like when they were doing the weird concussion angle thing with uh, was it Dolph Ziggler yeah. when he was champion like that they did with Sean too. They, you know, it was Sean like that it was a little weird, right? Like you felt a little uncomfortable with it. Like this was I thought done pretty well. Well, yeah, this is done well because like there's a segment beforehand with Drake Maverick asking Mustafa Ali if he's okay to go. Mm-hmm. So like it, it's cool because. Like Ali's the one putting himself in this match. It's not like a heel GM mm-hmm. make him do it or anything like that. But it's just, it's a really good match. Awesome, awesome. Uh, what about you, Riz? I learned that uh, there's one match that can can probably top RJ City versus David Arquette. Oh God, I know what you're gonna say. Wait, that actually happened? I think it did. It did yeah, happen did. at uh, uh, a. It, it, uh, it's. It, it, it's. I, I feel so bad for RJ. What do you mean you feel bad for a RJ? He uh, got in a TMZ learned, for this stuff. I learned that there's a new match coming out. Hmm. It's gonna be RJ City and David Arquette teaming up. Hmm. Well, it's rumored against James Ellsworth. Frank the fucking clown. Oh shit. Out. Out. <laughs> he just no. Beast Man's no. out. Beast Man's no. out. No, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm okay, I'm okay with David Arquette. I'm okay with that. <laughs> but there's no amount of money in the world that they can pay him to do that match. Beast no. Man's gone. Like he went I don't even know where he went. I, sorry, Beast, sorry, Beast Man. He can't hear you. He's gone. He's off the headphones. Beast Man, what did you learn from wrestling this week? What did you, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Other than he quit, I guess. As someone who has heard a Frank the Clown promo live, no, no, I have because I was in a bar in New Orleans 
that was playing nothing but wrestling themes mm. like a mating call. So I went there, and all of a sudden, Frank the fucking clown shows up on the stage. Oh. <laughs> he starts cutting a wrestling promo about Marx. He's famous because he goes to live shows all the time and, and adds relations with Noel and, Foley. And then he kept, he was cutting a promo so long that it brought out Noel Foley, who put a mandible claw on him. This is not a joke. Are they still going out? Yeah. I wish I was joking. Uh, I mean, are, are they still going out? Yes. Yeah. Yes. They are. Apparently that's happening. Beastman has returned. He has returned. Oh, you ever heard that? Remember that Chumba Wumba song, Tub Thumping? Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's just what it's going to be. Yeah. I get knocked down, I get up again, and you're never going to keep me down. But that song is just like that one lyric, pissing the night away. Jeez. Jeez. Beastman, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Sorry, I just, Beastman. Uh, I just learned that <laughs> I learned enough. You learned enough? I, I, after hearing about that, I learned it off. Now, honestly, uh, everybody has their favorite. Everybody has what they like and don't like. So, summons Frank the exactly. Clown. Frank the fucking Clown. <laughs> uh, Frank the clown. Uh, producer Missy learned that uh, Sorg made his in-ring debut in a cage. Yeah, sort of. Um, I, I learned that that cage at IWC is fucking dangerous. Oh, it was man. held up by duct tape. It, it was, it was, no, it wasn't duct tape. They were that was duct tape. Although there were, were people under the ring the entire time. Holding. So how did you not know the cage was dangerous? No, 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 no. I, okay, you're no, like you know it, how they say like oh the cage like rips you apart and stuff like that. Like this one actually does have jagged edges that I was catching my shirt. They, they they all do. Do all of them? Yep. Not the black diamond cage. No? Oh, well, no, because it's the big blue case. Yeah. And I think it's made of wood, isn't it? Uh, yeah, you gotta get it's jagged up in that. Yeah, it's gonna get a splinter, I guess, but <laughs> I haven't seen it. I really wish I would have seen it. Oh, but. it's 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 a uh, Rick Diamond Wait. masterpiece. Yeah, right. Wait, it's a blue wooden cage? It's so a ca- kind of, It's a kind of like the 80s version of the Punjabi prison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, were you in that match? No, I wasn't in that match. Who was in that match? I don't remember. <laughs> you just remember the big, well, the big blue cage was the star of the show. Let's play it that straight. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> like I'm going because I actually that was almost the first Black Diamond show I went to because I'm like I gotta see the big blue cage, right? <laughs> so this is the kind of stuff that that started getting my attention down there. But uh, anyways, um, no, no, but so did yeah, but I didn't realize it was like that sharp right like like i noticed that and then you start noticing and there's of course images of wardlow and jack pollock and they're you know all the all the you know scrapes on the back of their, their on their backs and everything from going into it like that's that's for real guys you know um i don't know if it's something you're gonna like bust a forehead on like officially but it's gonna it's gonna make maybe your, if you get raked across it yeah i mean it's gonna make your back but i mean i'd be worried about putting an eye out if you were seriously doing that but uh, no, that's that's that is not, you know that that is definitely for real. Um, but uh, uh, Tina's saying, ballet. "Go ahead." It ain't ballet, kids. It ain't ballet, kids. Well, I can't attest to that one. Yes. <laughs> uh, hey, girl. I've you're making friends outside the window again. Yeah, you've been making friends all night outside this window. I'm trying to. They've been, they've, been, they've been paying attention. I don't think so. No, not much. No. No. Might be the hat. <laughs> might be, it might be the hat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tina Keys in the chat room says that uh, she learned that the UK crowd is spoiled. Progress Wrestling has an amazing product to see live. Of course, they were up there in the uh, Seattle area, I believe. Um, I know she shared that in the uh, group as well. And they're going to get some NXT UK pretty soon, too. Are they? Ooh. Maybe starting for that, I believe. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I got what Missy learned as well. Thank you, producer Missy. Uh, so Beastman, like we said, tweet you at Beastman Husk. Yes, sir. Catch you on Facebook. Where are you coming up uh, in the next couple weeks? All right, uh, Saturday I'm going to be a master of Ohio for Mid Ohio Wrestling. Then uh, we got next Saturday night at, back here in Pittsburgh at McKeesport the uh, Wrestleplex for uh, Fight Society. Then the week after, uh, I'm still undecided. I'm either going to be at WXW in Allentown or I'm going to be 
somewhere around here local uh ucw in town don't know yet just don't work out details then uh sunday september 2nd this is one y'all don't want to miss down at black diamond mm-hmm. uh it's what's well, not it's not a black diamond wrestling show it is a diamond entertainment production is the best way i can put we are going for a world record for the biggest i mean the biggest Battle Royal ever to happen. We have over 100 competitors, three rings, oh, all at one time. And if you want to see carnage and mayhem, dysfunction, and this Battle Royal, you are going to see it. It is going to be a wonderful experience. Jeez, and we will be there with IndieWrestling.us to film it. For record, damn right. I hear there might be three rings in that place. There is going to be three rings in the Diamond Plex. How? I we're still trying to work out the schematics. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I gotta. I don't. So, I'm so trying, are you are you calling it the three ring circus? Because you really should. I can't make that decision, <laughs> but we can suggest it. Rick Diamond, I know you watch. There's an that, idea. that one's for that one's for free. Like, yes. A lot of promotions are involved and represented there. A lot of our friends uh, are represented. Uh, there's a list out there. I, I mean, I actually looked through the list and I'm like, I maybe know 25% of this list. It's pretty, it's pretty deep. So, but I think they reached into a lot of uh, West Virginia and Ohio promotions yep. out there as well. Uh, West so. Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. We got some people coming in from Canada. Jeez, it's going to be a, it's going to be a historic day in Benwood. Holy crap. The biggest, the biggest battle royal in Little Benwood, West Virginia. That's amazing. Just south of Wheeling. Yep. So you have a point on the map to figure that out from. So looking forward to that. I have no idea how I'm going to film that, but <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Or you're, it's going to be or a day at first. It will, it will. And I love. And I love like every every match. Every match that's been announced uh, to to go along with that day has no less than six people in them. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's gonna be especially the uh the Haas match that I'm in. The Haas match. Holy shit. You got two seven foot guys and you got six fat fucks like me. It's gonna be a good time. <laughs> and and a and a we also got a little person in that match too. A little person? Yes. Wait, a little Are, like a, a, an actual little person? Yes. I don't think Wait, hold on. Is is that Haas match just gonna turn into a Haas potato? That's the worst, just, that is the just, worst joke I've ever heard in my life, Mike. You haven't listened to the show for very long. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's pretty on the level for me. I'm way worse. Holy crap! Thank you so much for being on. I can't wait to see what happens here next month at this uh, this 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 biggest oh, battle world. Don't mean to cut you off real quick, oh, Mike. It's it. a uh, it's we're co running this with Mega Wrestling up in Cleveland too. So I wanted to okay put that in there. Yeah, and seeing a lot, seeing them uh, uh, pop up a bit. They were stop on cancer, of course. Yeah. So awesome, Mad Mike, Mad Mike Friday three on the Twitter. Look out for his live tweets and such. Absolutely, tomorrow night at some point I will be live tweeting Lucha Underground, and I am going to a wrestling show. So standard Mad Mike rules apply. If you see me and say hi, Mad Mike, you get to chop me, just once. Oh, I like to chop you. There's a reason I don't make that role for the indie shows. <laughs> There's a reason. Too many people know me at the indie shows. Oh, yeah, the indie shows, I wouldn't do it at an indie show. I do it at WWE shows. Yes. Yes. When you're hiding amongst 18,000 people. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Look at him. He's warming up. He wants to chop you through the internet, Mad Mike, for that horrible <laughs> joke you just told. Oh, he's already please. rubbing his hand. I, I know we're on delay, but he's rubbing his hands too. So I was like, "Cool, baby." <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the Riz Riz plays games. Yes, I, I might be doing some stuff. That yeah, explains all sure the board games over there. Oh, well, that, uh, that's for game night here. Jumanji. Game yeah, night. we're gonna do a Jumanji night in a couple weeks. You better invite me up for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like the last week of the month. All right. Yeah, man. the week before the uh, big battle royal. He played Jumanji. One with of us. you is gonna be Smolder Boulder Castle or whatever his name uh, is. I do, and I do have a Blu-ray copy of the original Jumanji movie for us to watch while we play Jumanji. I'm in. Mm-hmm. That's I'm in. that's the appeal of it. I'll get you invited here, Beast Man. All right. So, uh, all right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Everybody hanging out in the chat room all night long. Lots of you guys still hanging out there. Thank you so much, <sighs> Tina. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, uh, Alex. And uh, Wheels is hanging out. Ooh, Wheels. Sure. What up, hey, Hot Wheels? What's, what's up, going Aaron? on? We need to get you on into some podcasts here, Wheels. It's been a while. It's been too long. We need someone to lead the way. That's right. Cool. 
Thank you, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time, then attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time, then attack. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.